Well, hello. Fancy meeting you here. Um, okay, so, lesson four of permutations and combinations. Um, and really, this is a kind of a fun one because we're, in some respects, we're going to tie up a, a few loose ends with what we've been talking about uh, with the first three lessons, but also we're going to have questions where part of the question is a combination and then another part of the question is a permutation. So you have to actually work with both in the same question. It's really quite fun. Um, okay, so let's begin. If there are five dots on the circumference of a circle, how many triangles can be created? Well, you need to ask yourself, how many, um, how many dots do I need to form a triangle? So think about this for a second. Uh, here's my circle. Okay, and now here is my five dots. I don't like a marker. Here's my five dots. One, two, three, four, five. Now, I want to form a triangle. How many dots do I need to form the triangle? I need three. One, two, three. Now pay close attention to what I just did. I went there, there, there. If I went here to here, here to here, and then here to here. So I changed the order of combining those dots. Does that change the triangle? No. So this would be a combination question, not a permutation question, because changing the order doesn't produce a different result. Okay. So I have five dots. I'm selecting three at a time. And so when I put that in my calculator, I would get 10. How many lines can be drawn connecting two points on the circle? Well, same sort of setup. Uh, that'd be 5C2, and that would also be 10. Now, we're going to have a quick little talk about why those are the same thing. 5C3 is 10, and 5C2 is 10. I want you in your calculator to go 7C5. 7C5, and that gives you 21. Now I want you to try 7C2, and you'll notice that that's also uh, 21. So what I want you to notice is that when your r's add up to n, like for this example, 2 plus 3 gives me 5. Okay, in the example I just gave you, 7c5 and 7c2, 2 plus 5 gave me the 7. Okay, so when your r's add up to n, they'll always equal the same number. Okay, so that tells you right away that Let's do 10C3 has to equal 10C7, right? Okay, because 3 and 7 equal 10. You'll always get the same number. Now, some of you may be asking why. So here's my example, a little morbid, but you'll remember it. Let's say I was an assassin, okay? I'm a hired guy to go kill people. Um, so I walked into a room that had 10 people. If I walk into a room that has 10 people in it and say, hey, I'm going to choose three of you and kill you, isn't that the exact same thing as me walking into a room with 10 people in it and saying, hey, I'm going to choose seven of you and let you live? Okay, the exact same thing is happening. Okay, and that's why, like, it's just looking at it from two different perspectives. Okay, so when the two R values add up to N, you'll always get the same um, the same answer. Okay. All right. Now, in a regular pentagon, uh, regular just means that all sides and angles are equal to each other. Pentagon means I have how many sides? Good. But I'm going to just assume you said five because that would be my utopic world. How many lines can be drawn uh, connecting two points on the pentagon, including the sides of the pentagon? Well, um, again, Five vertices there would essentially be five points there. I'm going to connect. I need two of them to connect. Okay, so that would end up being five choose two and that would be ten and I drew them over to the right here for you. Um, you watching the video would be like right below where I am but uh, okay so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Now how many of those lines are diagonal? Well, <clears throat> diagonal means that you're going from corner to corner within the shape, okay? So this is a diagonal, that's one, that's two, that's three, that's four, and that's five. There are five diagonals there, okay? 
how can we express this in terms of combinatorics or combinations? Um, essentially, what you have to think about is when you did the five choose two, that gave you everything. Then you'd have to minus the outside sides because the outside sides are not diagonals. So what we would do in this case, it would be five choose two minus five because there's five lines on the outside. But in any scenario, it would be n choose two minus n, okay? So n choose two minus n, where n is the number of sides in a uh, regular polygon, okay? So if a polygon has 54 diagonals, how many sides are there? Well, this is just a little algebra problem to solve now. I know we just established that the formula was n choose two minus n uh, equals, in this case, 54. So n choose two minus n equals 54. We're gonna expand this using our formula. So that's n factorial over n minus two factorial, two factorial minus n equals 54. Again, we need to clean this up. So I'm gonna go ahead and expand this guy down to meet the n minus two. I'm also gonna multiply both sides by two to get rid of two factorial because two factorial is two. A reminder, when you do that though, you have to multiply every term. So this guy here is also gonna to have to get multiplied by two because he's a separate term, okay? So that's gonna leave me with, I expanded my n down to n minus two. Now I know that my n minus two factorials will cancel each other out. Then I multiplied the n by two, so that's minus two n. And I multiplied the 54 by two, which is 108. This is now n squared uh, minus n minus two n equals 108. I wanna clean that up because I got a cute little quadratic to deal with that I'm gonna to have to factor. So n squared minus three n, that was a minus n over here and a minus two n, that's where the negative three n came from. And then I brought my 108 over to be minus 108. So now I'm looking for two numbers that multiply together to give you negative 108 add together to give you negative three. You've gone ahead and found them, I'm hoping, and that's negative 12 and nine, which means n is negative nine and 12, but a reminder that n has to be greater than two, because uh, I, uh, I can't have less than what I'm selecting. So n has to be greater than two, it has to be a natural number. Negative nine doesn't work, my answer is 12. This was a 12-sided polygon, okay? Okay, so this question says, in how many ways can you choose one or more of 12 different candies? Okay, so I'm gonna walk you through this two different ways. Uh, the first way is we could look at this and say, okay, I have 12 candies and I wanna choose one of them. Or I have 12 candies and I wanna choose two of them. Or I have 12 candies and I wanna choose three of them. And so that ends up being uh, 12 choose one plus, remember anytime you say or, that's gonna be adding separate cases together. So 12 choose one plus 12 choose two plus 12 choose three plus 12 choose four all the way up to 12 choose 12, okay? And if you would like to do it that way, perfectly okay. It's a lot of button pushing in your calculator, but totally fine. I'm gonna throw another visual at you to see if you like this way better. I'm gonna say, okay, every candy itself has two options, to choose or not to choose, okay? So I could think of it almost like a fundamental counting principle where I have 12 different slots. The first slot is for the first candy and I have two options for that first candy, choose it or don't choose it. Then I have two options for the second candy, choose it or don't choose it. So very quickly that becomes two times two times two times two times two or two to the 10, uh, sorry, two to the 12 because I have 12 different candies. Except in there, do you remember a while ago me talking about the, uh, the whole slot machine and turning the crank and you get one bad combination? In there, there's a bad combination of no candies and the question says you have to choose at least one because it says one or more. So you'd have to subtract one from your answer. So it'd be two to the 12 minus one and that equals 4,095. All right, so now let's take a look at kind of working with both of these items at the same time. Up until now, we have dealt with permutations and combinations separately. However, sometimes we will be required to do both in a single question. 
we can both arrange and select. Usually the word arrange is referring to permutations and the word select is referring to combinations. So you wanna ask yourself, how many objects do we begin with? How many objects have to be selected from them? And then does the order of the selected objects matter? If yes, it's a permutation. If it's no, it's a combination. Okay, so where does this play into practice? Um, how many arrangements of the word trigonal can be made if only two vowels and three consonants are used? Well, here's what you need to see. I, O, and A, there are three vowels in trigonal. Um, I only need two of them. So the first thing I have to do is select my two vowels from three. Selecting them, the order doesn't matter. I'm just putting them into a pile right now. Then I need three consonants. Well, how many consonants do I have? I've got the T and the R and the G and the N and the L. So that's gonna be five different consonants and I need to choose three of them. That got me all the ways to get five letters where two of them are vowels and three of them are consonants. What I haven't done yet is arrange all of those five letter piles that I just created. So now, I need to make or arrange the five letter word, okay? So that becomes three select two, that's getting my two vowels from a possibility of three vowels. Five select three, that's getting my three consonants from the possibility of five consonants. And then five permute five or five arrange five, um, that's arranging the five letter word. So I multiply all that together and I get 3,600. Okay, a sports team with six unique positions is to be formed from five rookie players and seven veteran players. In how many ways can these positions be formed by two rookies and four veterans? So I only want two rookies, but I have five to choose from, so I'm choosing two from five. I only want four veterans, but I have seven to choose from, so I'm choosing four from seven. That gets me my six players, but then they each have unique positions. So maybe one's a forward and one's a defense and one's a goalie um, and so on. So I have to now arrange those six positions. So that's gonna be five select two times seven select four times six permute six. And that gives me 252,000. All right. How many four digit numbers can be formed using the digit 0, 2, 3, 5, 7, and 8 if the number has to be even and the numbers can't repeat? Okay, we actually did a question like this similar in our very first lesson. I need you to see that zero could be at the end, but zero can't be at the beginning, which means I have to control where zero is. So I have to immediately split this into two different cases. Case one, I end in zero. Case two, I will end in a non-zero. Okay, so this time I'm looking at four digit numbers. Um, so for this guy, I ended up with five times four times three times one. Now I kind of want to unpack where I got that for you. I don't want anybody to get confused about that. So let me draw it over here. I have one, two, three, four, one in the back, which is my zero because I want it to end in zero. Um, then really it's anything goes in the front, right? Except that I had six digits and I've used one. So that's where the five comes from and the four comes from and the three comes from for the next guy, okay? I keep using a digit, so the amount I have available to me goes down. Five times four times three, end up with 60. Now, if I wanted to end in a non-zero, well, let's just think that through for a sec. Um, I still have to be even, so my non-zero options could be the two or the eight. So there are two options back here. Okay, the two or the eight. Now, I have six numbers to play with. I've used one, so that means I have five numbers to play with, but one of them is zero and I can't use that in the front, which means there's only four options here. When I get to here, there are four options again because now zero is back in play. So I'm looking at, I started with six and I've used two numbers. Um, so that would be four and that would be three. Okay, so let me just keep going with my slide here. That's where the four times four times three times two is. And when I multiply that together, it's 96. These are two separate cases. They're an or 
um, which means I'm going to add the two separate cases together. I could have this or this. So adding them together gives me 154. Sorry, 156. That was really bad mental math. Um, I actually don't know where the 154 came from in my head. That's okay. 156. Um, 156 total possibilities that would fit all of those uh, restrictions. Okay. All right. Now, that's it for me on this guy. Um, keep up the good practicing and keep asking me questions. I love questions. So don't ever feel like you're bothering me uh, by asking questions. Okay. Keep it real, guys. Take care.